even then only a very small number of us ever made it. I'm going to say 25 out of, I would say approximately four or five hundred guys probably trying to make, make it happen. You know. And the first day, uh, actually when we left the tankers and walked through the woods, there were GIs everywhere. And you hear people tramping away in the leave. And, and that's when I said, let's, 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 let's quit this because we, we saw a machine gun you know, 200 yards in front of us just waiting for us. And you know, they could hear us coming. 100 yards away probably. And so we hid out under a pine tree and put the leaves, those leaves up over in there, just like a little fort inside it. And the only way you could see us was look right straight down there. We stayed there all day and, and that night when we started out, we instead of going toward the machine gun, we went the other way, way around. Finally came to the edge of the woods and we could see the, 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 the Germans three or 400 yards to our right. But it was a moonlight night and it was wide open field. There was no way you could walk out of there. And uh, we actually uh, sat down and fell asleep because we were so tired from uh, the ner nerves and so on and so forth. And when we woke up about midnight, God had sent a fog. And we walked out under cover of the fog. The Germans couldn't see us. And uh, so the next day we hit out in a little thicket and, and we could hear people moving on the road, we could hear a bridge, we could hear water. We knew we were near a river. And so that night we started out and I had never encountered such black nights as we had those two nights. The night we were we were released, we're fr racing down the road. My half track that I got on conked out right outside the camp and they put it on the back of what they called the wrecker. They had an eight and a half ton wrecker put like a, a truck, you know, picking up a, a car, and we'd go ro roaring down the road 40 miles an hour, can't see our pan in front of our face until we catch up with the car. And, and uh, so the next night was real dark, and we almost walked into a whole regiment of German soldiers. It was so dark you couldn't see them. And about 50 yards from them, we, I, I saw them, we stopped let him go through, went across the road, found the river, no way to get across the river, couldn't go across the bridge because the Germans were guarding the bridge. So we took off all our clothes and we had the Germans give us Russian, I'm sorry, Polish overcoats. So we took those and put some logs through the sleeves and made a little raft, put our supplies on them. One of the guys jumped in the water, took it over and, and bent and beached it on the other side and we, we went across the river and, and uh, got up on the other side. And then that night why, why uh, we were walking, it started raining. And so we figured we had to find a place dry. And so we, we, we got ran into another river and we didn't want to swim in another river that night. So we started looking and we found an abandoned house. Behind the abandoned house was a little shack. Not the size of this place right here. And we crawled up in the night on a little ladder and, and uh, uh, stayed there from 5.30 in the morning until about 9.30. And we opened the door, and when the Russians, had, when, the, when the, the Armored Task Force had come through, the 4th Armored, they had released a 1,000 Russian prisoners from war. And those Russian prisoners from war got into a German PX and stole a whole bunch of candies and stuff like that. And, and uh, so we're looking at, and we watched the Germans capture about 25 of those Russian POWs about 200 yards away. And, and uh, uh, so we, we heard the, the tankers had told us about this, so we knew, knew what was going on. And, and uh, so we're standing there, we're looking, and here's this beautiful little valley, and the river splits and goes into two little streams down the side of the valley. And, and so we could see our, our that night we planned going across this way and there was a little bridge on the other side. We were going to go over the bridge and here comes a German squad. They were seen to mine the bridge. And out from under the bridge comes a German soldier with a burp gun. You know what a burp gun is? Yes, sir. Okay. And, and he didn't know what one was. That's why I asked. <laughs> yeah, no. No, I don't know. And, and, no, I don't. And, uh, 
uh, they proceed to mine the bridge. Well, a non common charge walks over to the abandoned house, and we're trapped in this little, little shack, and we get kind of nervous about being trapped if we have no way to get the way. And so we're just, we think he's going back. And we're, we picked up the ladder, we're just about ready to open the door and go out, and I threw a crack in the door. I see him come back. And he comes right to the edge of our shack and stops. And there's a railroad track going down in front. And he sees this guy walking down the railroad track and he says, Hello, I'm in Zion Cigarette and for Stainson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and uh, uh, he goes on. Well, we jump out and I'm standing there with a knife in front of the door in case he sees. And because he gets that cigarette, he goes in the back. Well, when I jump out, my GI gloves have fallen out and were laying on the ground. If he doesn't see the guy with a cigarette, I might not be talking to you today. Yeah. And, and it was that touch and go, because I don't know whether, whether you know, what, what, what would have happened if he just said this. And so we started back up, run back up into the woods behind this shack. And here's all this candy laying on the ground. These Russians are liberated from the PX. I get a box of candy about two foot long, about a foot square, and I start to run up this hill. And I get about halfway up the hill, I'm done. And then let you guys go back and take it away from me, and we go up. So, so. so the next few days, we're, we're in the virgin woods and don't see anybody except some deer, some animals, and like that.